one billion dollars. You've been waiting in line for four hours, so what? Build a bridge over those ship channels. Let's figure this out. I am fighting quite a bit of wind here, so I really hope the audio turns out well. Here we are on the Galveston Bolivar Ferry. I wanted to cover something that gets asked quite a bit. Instead of the ferry, why isn't there just a bridge that runs from Galveston and Bolivar, Bolivar to Galveston? And today I wanted to jump right into why that is such a problematic option. Let's talk about it. Of course, ferry is not only a pleasure cruise, it is key to getting people to and from Bolivar and back. Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. As we pull away from the ferry landing on the Galveston side and head over towards Bolivar, we enter the Bolivar Rose, as well as one of the busiest ship channels in the United States. Now this ship channel right here, not only leads you into the port of Galveston, but also the port of Texas City and the port of Houston, one of the busiest ports in the US. So when we think of the Galveston Bolivar Ferry, a lot of times we only think of it as a Galveston thing. But in reality, this ferry crosses three major ship channels. Now you may be thinking, so what? Build a bridge over those ship channels. And one thing we have to ask is where would that bridge actually be coming from and going to? Where is it going to leave Galveston and go into Bolivar and vice versa? How long will that bridge have to be? But the most important question is how tall is that bridge going to be? If you've lived in the area long enough, you know how annoying it is to sit in line waiting for the ferry from either side, going from Galveston to Bolivar or vice versa. And yes, 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 it is annoying. It really is. And we've all asked ourselves and maybe even some authority figures in the Galveston area, why don't we build a bridge? So first, let's just talk about the basic logistics on where the bridge would leave Galveston from. We have two main options. Start the bridge at the end of the current seawall all the way on the east end. And the second one from Pelican Island, where Seawall Park is today. Standing on Bolivar Peninsula, the very, very tip, got the ferry right here. I don't know. What do you think? Is this a good spot to land the bridge from Galveston? Start the bridge at the very east end of the seawall, coming right over the Galveston, Houston, and Texas City ship channel to land somewhere on the Bolivar side. Now, Bolivar, there isn't as much infrastructure on this side. You could land that bridge over near Fort Travis or somewhere closer to the ferry landing or maybe even farther east. But then you will be spanning three ship channels. Now, the other option for leaving Galveston would be starting the bridge on Pelican Island. So pretty much somewhere where Seawolf Park is now and taking that bridge right over the Houston and Texas City ship channels since you would pretty much be bypassing the Galveston ship channel. But that comes with a whole nother set of infrastructure issues like expanding and improving the bridge already going from Galveston to Pelican Island and taking that road and expanding it even more. Now you might be asking, why don't you just start the bridge where the current ferry landing is? Well, a bridge project could take years. Now starting a construction project on top or near the ferry landing is kind of out of the question because then there would be difficulty getting to the ferry landing if there's construction or you just have to stop operations of the ferry. The only way to get to and from Bolivar doesn't really make too much sense to do that. Those are the two options I see. If I missed any or you guys have options, Put them down in the comments. Let's figure this out. Let's take a look at distances. Here we go from the east end of the seawall to Fort Travis is 2.04 miles. This is the direct shortest distance, best case scenario. Remember the problem with having a bridge right here is that you not only have to make it tall enough for all the container ships and massive vessels going into Texas City and Houston, but you have to plan a bridge that is tall enough for the increasing size of cruise ships coming into the port of Galveston. So for this one, using current infrastructure such as Pelican Island Parkway coming directly into Pelican Island, then you would have to travel two miles over a major ship channel. For comparison, here we have the Fred Hartman Bridge. Now this one is just about two miles, the same length as both of these potential bridges. But one thing that makes a Galveston to Bolivar Bridge such a big deal is how tall it will have to be. There are terminals that are built farther down or farther south of the ship channel, specifically so larger vessels can reach them so they do not have to pass under the Fred Hartman, the Beltway 8, or the 610 bridge. Either one of these potential bridges would have to be extremely long and extremely tall, which racks up the cost. All right, now let's talk about how much it would actually cost to build a bridge. Two examples I know of current bridge projects spanning major ship channels in our area are the Beltway 8 bridge going over the ship channel and the Corpus Christi bridge. 
And if you keep up with all the latest local bridge news like I have, neither one of those projects are looking too good right now. Both of those bridges clock in close to $1 billion. And those are budgeted amounts. And we all know budgets go over. At the bare minimum, we're gonna be spending a billion dollars on a bridge if we decide to build it here. Now, another question that I am not really well versed in is who pays for it? You know, the ferry is run by TxDOT, the Texas Department of Transportation. Now, somebody who knows way more than I do about who would actually pay for a bridge project, please let me know down in the comments. I want to hear all the details, like who would actually pay for this bridge? I don't know. All I know is it's expensive and it's coming out of someone's pocket if that happens. Now, if we decided to start building the bridge from the very east end of Galveston or Pelican Island, doesn't matter, let's say we get construction started. When you're building over a major ship channel, you are going to have delays, 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 both on the construction side and on the ship channel side. When you analyze the Port of Houston in Texas City, two major economic drivers to the state of Texas. A delay on bringing in or sailing a ship from the Port of Houston or the Port of Texas City is costly. During a construction project, if there's any issue where you have to delay vessel traffic, it could cost hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, which could exceed the cost of the bridge itself. Not to mention increasing that budget that somebody has to pay for. Who knows, maybe we could just use some of the material from the Selma. Now, if you've been to Galveston recently, you know that we have some of the largest cruise ships coming to the Port of Galveston. And if you've seen them, it is unbelievable how tall they actually are. The Port of Texas City has the capability to bring in some of the largest vessels in the world, called VLCCs, and they can go right in and out of the Port of Texas City. The channel is deep and wide enough to handle them, the Port of Houston, Bayport, and Barber's Cut. Those are two container terminals that are massive. And if you've ever been standing on Galveston Beach or over in Bolivar, looking out into the ship channel, you can see these giant container ships coming in. Those container ships are massive, very wide, but more importantly, very tall. This potential bridge, very, very long and very, very high. Now let's say you successfully get a bridge built from Galveston to Bolivar, Bolivar to Galveston. It's perfect, it's pristine, it is high enough, it is long enough. Then we look at maintenance costs and the lifespan of the bridge. Once you build that bridge, those maintenance costs are going to rack up. The older it gets, it starts falling apart, it starts rusting out. You've gotta replace bits and pieces of that bridge over time, I'm talking 30 to 50 years, however long a bridge lasts. I can tell you the upfront cost of building a bridge and the potential maintenance costs well exceed what it costs these ferries to operate today. Even if building a brand new ferry costs you between 30 and $50 million between now and 50 years from now, you break that down into operating costs and multiple millions of dollars per vessel every year, including paying your crew, paying every little bit that goes into the landings and everything on Bolivar and Galveston, I don't see that adding up to the cost and potential issues of a billion dollar bridge spanning a major waterway. We have to consider that we already have an operating ferry system. It may not be the most efficient and we can even see some of the inefficiencies here in Bolivar and Galveston. The ferry system is perfect for being able to navigate between those vessels. They can stop, slow down, get out of the way, and take care of all the passengers on board. So our complaints are not competing with TxDOT. They're not competing with this highway system. They're not competing with other people on Facebook. When we complain about the ferry, when we want a bridge, when we want a more efficient way to get across this ship channel right here, that would make it so easy to go from Galveston to Bolivar, Bolivar to Galveston and everywhere around, we're really competing with one of the largest economic drivers of Texas, the Port of Houston, the Port of Texas City, and the Port of Galveston. With all of these considerations, when you build a bridge, you have to move the current infrastructure out of the way or take it by eminent domain which can become increasingly difficult and costly. Okay, so everything that I've just talked about, those are just considerations today. I'm not even talking about future considerations. The coastal spine, otherwise known as the Ike Dyke, these major infrastructure projects that are already planned, that would be very difficult to build a bridge around. We've talked about logistics, we've talked about delays, we've talked about the cost. We've talked about who we're actually competing with the vessels that call these ports every single day. To conclude and bring it all home, Galveston, Texas City, and Houston welcome some of the largest ships in the world to their port. Not only are they just welcoming large ships, they're welcoming large ships frequently. 
So until we no longer have to cross a major driver of our economy, we will be riding the ferry. If this video was informational and you learned something, go check out my page, my podcast, Galveston Unscripted. If you have any other questions or recommendations about Galveston, let me do the deep diving. I'll dive in, make a video, and figure out what you want to know. But I really like to talk about history. If you guys have any deeper information or better details, comment down below, let me know. And that's it. Thanks for joining me on Galveston Unscripted.